Welcome to Crypto After Dark. I'm your host, Jacob Perry, and Bitcoin, like I said, is going up, it's hitting that 70K-ish area, but right now we are getting a little bit of a pullback. We're hitting a little bit of resistance before we can make it to the top of that triangle that we were looking at. So with all that, let's go ahead and look at the market. Market coming in at $2.6 trillion. Is that right? Wow. I feel like just yesterday it was at just 1.5 or something. Wow. So $2.6 trillion, trending coins, gala, $155 billion in volume. That's a, that's a lot of money, people. That's more money than I have. What else do we have? Largest gainers. A coin that I can't even begin to pronounce because I'm American, but up 62.8%. <clears throat> Bitcoin coming in at $67,932.69. or $67,932.69. Ethereum coming in at $3,200. BNB coming in at 580, Solana 179, XRP 58 cents, Dogecoin 17 cents, Cardano 57 cents, and let's scroll down to a couple. You know what? People like Chainlink. $17 for Chainlink. That's pretty dang good. Okay, we're just at 20. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Let's go down to our, our boy Render. Still at $9.38. I did just refresh the page, so this is recent with a $3 billion market cap. Honestly, this is looking really juicy. We have Optimism at $3.05 with also a $3 billion market cap, just slightly less. And if, is there anything else? I don't see anything else that I'm really looking into right now because I want to make as much money as I possibly can. And then I can throw it. I will tell you this. Python Network, I was watching that over the bear market. Wild to see it at a billion dollar market cap. Wild to see it at a billion dollar market cap. Right now, in the past seven days, I don't really look at the 24-hour very much because the seven days is really kind of what you want to see where the trend is, where it's headed. Is it going to end? Is it going to continue? And uh, so I look at the seven-day, and Bitcoin right now is, um, <clears throat> forgive me, uh, Bitcoin's just down 4% on the seven-day. It's not bad. Ethereum down 7%. Uh, what else? Our biggest loser right now in the top 10 is dogecoin down 17.8 percent cardano down 10 percent and uh in our top 20 what do we have the biggest loser in the top 20 looks like it might be and i think it is oh it's between uniswap and avalanche which one uh avalanche down 15.7 percent and uniswap down 15.2 so the in the top hey the top 20 biggest losers avalanche of 15.7 percent for the weekly and then moving on past that let's go to our boy optimism down 17 percent. it's down pretty good render down 15 percent. man i'm telling you these these are good times to buy these are good times to literally just take the bull run by the horns and run with it uh what else have we got going on we have the entire uh fear and greed index coming in at 79 uh, uh right now as, as far as actually, can we uh, let me go ahead and refresh this? How, how, how long ago is this? This greed and fear index posted approximately uh, at five. OK, five o'clock p.m. So not even approximately five o'clock p.m. We are in the extreme greed of the bull market. So we could either press in further, say the same or pull back a little bit more before the having what, what, what which one is going to take place? I know what no one knows, but I will say this because we are in a bull market. We had just started. I would say it technically started way back in probably August, but we're really seeing the excitement right now. We could press further into this and really just crank out these things. Uh, let's check out. Uh, I, I did load this page earlier, so I want to go ahead and refresh the page. So it was at 16 days. Now it's at 17 days and it's looking at April 22nd right now. Let's go over this. OK, because this is something that I, I want to go over every single time. We need to be looking at the uh at the Bitcoin having, we need to look at this every single day until the having. That's what we need to do because it's it's the pivotal moment for everything crypto. And when I mean everything crypto, I mean literally everything crypto. I literally mean that because what happens to Bitcoin, like happen, like it happens to everything else, unless of course it's like off. And anyways, this is a whole technical spectrum that Bitcoin. Uh, has a ratio of one and then one of negative one. Uh, anyways, let's. I'm not even trying to get into that because it's really technical and I'm not a nerd and I'm not a data analyst, but I do like to read the data a little bit. So, oh, my hair is looking terrible. My goodness. All right. So let's look at this. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin having is in 17 days, 26 minutes and 56 seconds. So that's pretty nice. We do have the block, uh, the event block high at 
840,000. That means 840,000 blocks have been produced on the Bitcoin blockchain. And we are at, we are sitting at 837,755 at the block height right now. This is where we currently are. This is where we need to be for the having to happen. The block time is 655 exchange rate. Actually, I want to find out more about this block time. I do. Uh, is, is this minutes? Is this hours? What, what exactly is the block time? The difficulty is 83.127 texahash. And the Bitcoin market cap is 1.34 trillion. Let's go ahead and read this. This is really important. And I will be covering this literally every single day, Monday through Friday, until the halving. Okay. Block halving, uh, block halving events happen every four years. It's approximately uh, because it's every 210,000 blocks. So the, the time could change between three and a half to four years on Bitcoin's blockchain. Uh, Bitcoin's initial block reward was 50 Bitcoin. The current block reward is 6.25 Bitcoin. The next block reward is 3.125 Bitcoin. This lowers the rate at which Bitcoin are generated. The halving is periodical and is programmed into Bitcoin's code. Now that right there is exactly what we need to talk about. And I have my handy dandy, excuse me, my, uh, okay, uh, apparently my, uh, my OBS hotkeys decided to stop working. That's okay. Dang it, OBS. Get your crap together. I have my handy dandy memory card right here. This is an aftermarket memory card. But to understand Bitcoin, okay, think of it in terms of this memory card right here. This is the Bitcoin network, and on this, you have little blocks of data. And in that blocks of data, instead of it being game data, you have transaction data of buying and selling Bitcoin, who sold Bitcoin to who, who received Bitcoin from who. That is the block that is being produced. So you have people who are going on the internet, getting they're running nodes, they're, they have their minor rigs set up through their computers, and they are solving mathematical equations to mine blocks that on the Bitcoin network. So on the memory cards, you already have blocks that are on there, and it already has, it has blocks on there, and it's just waiting for you to put game data on it. However, on the Bitcoin network, you don't have any blocks there. There's no blocks there. You have to create those blocks. And so that is called mining. When you create a block through solving mathematical equations, that produces a block of data that can store the transaction data. So it's, it's a block that stores transaction. Data. It's a memory card. Think of it like a memory card. I had totally, probably terribly explained that, but go back and watch the previous videos from last night. And I, I explained it very well. Uh, but let's, uh, oh, look, my hotkeys are working again. Thank you. So that's this. Um, you can go and find this. You can find this out uh, for the Bitcoin having countdown at nice hash forward slash countdown forward slash Bitcoin dash having dash 2024 slash or dash five. You get the idea. You, you know exactly. You just type it in Google. Nice hash Bitcoin having countdown. Now let's go ahead and let's look at Bitcoin. So this is exactly what we're anticipating here. If you know, if you've been watching the channel for any time, you know that I drew these support and resistance lines these these blue support and resistance lines forever ago so and we also drew this uh support and resistance lines in this triangle forever ago as well well bitcoin has been in this support and resistance line since march 14th it has come down it's gone up it's come down and it is hitting resistance right here at 68,620 per almost perfectly spot on and it's coming looks like it could be coming back down back down to 66,000. Now, this candle did just start out, like this just started out around five or four, four o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which would be a seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So it hasn't been out very long at all. And so there's a lot of room where this candle can just run to the moon or freaking into the ground. Now, what will happen? I have no idea. I have no idea. If you want to know what, what could happen, maybe you want to look at the four hour chart that could tell us it looks like we are probably going to be coming back down to read like we're we hit it we got rejected it's an obvious clear rejection and then uh, we could be coming right back down if you want to get even more technical over here you can go to the hourly chart and see what's going down yeah this is a clear rejection we are coming back down looks like to 65 66 000 right around here uh, just just to touch this little line right here, okay? If we if we go to sixty five thousand, we're not going very far into it. it looks like sixty five eight approximately, but we totally just got rejected from this. That's clear as day. But let's uh, let's move back to the daily chart because that's where that's where the good news is, okay? That's where the good news is because we are in a bull run because we are in a bull run. Look at this. This is nice. Now, ooh ooh, I don't think okay. So there's a way that I can overlap charts here. And I'm not nerdy enough to do it, but I will say this, this chart right here and this chart right here 
hang on. On the monthly time frame, this is silver, by the way. On the monthly time frame, they look incredibly similar. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my. I mean, this pattern right here, this just broke out for silver. Silver just broke out. It had its inverse head and shoulders. And uh, where, where, where's the target for this, actually? Now, now that I can actually see an inverse head and shoulder. I saw this earlier today or yesterday. And I was like, oh, man, that's that's awesome. So we do have an inverse head and shoulders. And it did break out. And it looks like, man, it looks like silver could be going to $33, quite honestly, which is approximately at its all-time high, or not all-time high, of its uh, another high way back here in 2012 of $35. Now, what happened then? Well, uh, in 2012, we hit a recession, and then, I mean, things were going down since, 2000, what is this, 2011, things were just going down, down, down. The dollar uh, was actually getting really strong, surprisingly, but that's how things work. But this pattern right here is um, it's almost identical, not, ne not necessarily in candlestick shape here, but just in the pattern overall for Bitcoin. Look at that. And uh, look, look at look at Bitcoin. My goodness. This, it's the same pattern. I don't know exactly what you call this pattern, quite honestly, because it doesn't matter what it's called, because all things, all patterns are probabilities. And uh, man, wh why does my stomach keep itching? That's really weird. You see me keep scratching my stomach. Are you one of those weird people that say, I'm going to itch my stomach? Or are you one of those perfect people that say, you're going to scratch your stomach? No, I'm kidding. Um, but if you say itch, I just want you to know, you are wrong. That is 100% true. You are wrong. But anyways, uh, we will be coming up eventually. We will be breaking this uh, level of resistance here. Let's look at the RSI. Uh, enough being silly. Uh, we are coming back up. I and mean, it's just still kind of in like limbo land right now. And uh, we are still below the yellow signal line looking at the uh, looking at market cipher B. Look at this. I told you guys. I told you. I told you. I told you. This is so good. This is so good. So great. We are curving right here. And man, I'm so excited about this. We are curving. I told you guys for the past couple of days that this dip will not be lasting long. No two ways about that. It's already curving. Look at this. It's about to print a green dot. It's about to print a freaking green dot on Market Cypher B. Okay? It is. And you have your anchor wave, your trigger wave, and probably another trigger wave. Things are moving up. There is bullish momentum coming way down here in January, moving up, up here in March, and even up more right here in April. Things are freaking bullish. And if it prints a green dot, I'm telling you, Thing, things are going to be awesome. Things are going to be fan freaking tastic. I'm so excited for this. So things are moving up. That's clear as day. We are in a bull run. And it looks like, I mean, my goodness, when, when the blue wave and the light blue wave cross each other, that's when it prints a dot, whether it's red or green, that, that's when. Right now, the next in the sequence, we just had our red dot, and now we're about to have our green dot. We had our red dot on Monday, and now we're about to have our green dot approximately Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, at latest Monday. Okay, now this could totally just be a fake out, and everyone's going long, everyone's excited, and then we just get a long squeeze and we plummet right back down to 60,000 or so something ridiculous, okay? Because um, when long squeezes happen or short squeezes happen, uh, it does get a little ridiculous. I mean, it really does. The, the price goes in crazy directions. We do have the VWAP coming up. Look, the VWAP is coming up. Look at that. The yellow VWAP is coming up. We do have the money flow starting to curve up as well. I'm super excited for this. This is man, this is glorious. Let's go ahead and look at Ethereum. Did uh, did Ethereum make its way all the way down a market cipher B? Look at that. I told you guys it's in it's deep in the oversold zone. It's starting to curve too. Um, with with the VWAP. Look at the VWAP's moving up. And now we're just waiting for a green dot. The money flow is still coming down, but the VWAP is going up, and that's really nice. Now we're just waiting for the money flow to catch up with the VWAP. As far as the RSI goes, it's still way down here in the uh, in the oversold zone or the, uh, the the bearish zone, if you will. And as far as the pattern goes, uh, uh, shoot, I don't know. Wait for it to come back out. We can actually extend this down a little bit further um, because the, the, it needs to travel a couple of days. So. We're looking at maybe, unless we just get an explosive move uh, this coming up week, we're looking at, at, at the latest, may, maybe, I'm, I'm thinking like the 16th, that is the latest. I mean, we're stretching that thing out right near the halving. That's when we're stretching it out. Um, but I don't know, man. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be that long. I really don't. Uh, let's go ahead and look at Cardano. Cardano is a big mover. 
Are we going to break this neckline here? And are we going to dip or are we going to dump all the way to oblivion? I don't think so. I mean, we are still in the oversold zone here. I, well, it's not really oversold as much as it is. We're just in a bearish trend, I should say, when it comes to Cardano. But look, it's it's well in the oversold zone on market side for B. That's for dang sure. And we're just waiting for a green dot. Now, we could get further pushed down with this head and shoulders pattern. And if this head and shoulder pattern plays out and we're looking at a 40 freaking cent Cardano, you need to load up, okay? Everyone wants to dip. Everyone wants to get in earlier. Oh, I should have bought earlier. Oh, I should have bought whenever things were down 80%. Look, yeah, everyone wants that until it's time to actually do it. 40 cents, not a bad buy, okay? I got in way earlier. I got in way before 40 cents. Um, but look, if it goes down that high, scoop it up. You know, don't be a dummy. Or you do whatever you want with your money. I don't really care what you do with your money. But just be smart about your investments. Remember to buy low, sell high. Or if you just want to get wrecked, sell low, buy high, and lose all your money. Uh, but hey, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Uh, let's look at our boy Optimism. Optimism's hanging out, holding support at uh, $2.94. So that's really nice. And uh, looking at the RSI, it is deep, deep, deep close to the 30 or yeah, close to the 30 zone here. We are getting to the point where we are oversold on the RSI and looking at market cipher B, we, we have officially hit oversold zones on optimism. So, and, or, and basically what we need to be looking for is a green dot. We need to be looking for a green dot confirmation. We do have the yellow view up coming up. The money flow is still coming down, but I do anticipate because we are in the deep oversold zone, because the view up is moving up, I do anticipate the money flow to start moving up because it's diverging and it, the money flow needs to catch up. And when everyone sees that things are deep in the oversold zone, that money flow, bet your bottom dollar, it will catch up. It will ash catch them. That's for dang sure. But let's go ahead and let's look at the Dixie. Okay, we need to look at the Dixie. What's the Dixie doing? Well, the Dixie actually looks like it just bottomed out here and it wants to go to the top. Uh, maybe retest these levels right here. It did just kind of make an, it looks like it's wanting to make an inverse head and shoulders pattern to be perfectly honest with you. Oddly enough, man, patterns within patterns, am I right? This is like inception, inception. We have a, a shoulder here, a head here, and another shoulder right here. And it looks like it kind of wants to make this little inverse head and shoulders pattern. And if it does that, we are going up. We should expect a bigger dip if this inverse head and shoulder pattern plays out. We should definitely expect a bigger dip on Bitcoin and altcoins altogether. And not just that, but uh, whenever we look at everything over here, uh, if, if we zoom out, let's go ahead and look at the RSI. Things are, kind of, it looks, it's, it, I mean, it's in the bullish territory. No two ways about that. And we, we are looking like we want to maybe cross over to that signal line again, looking at market side for B, we do have some downtrend. So maybe the inverse head and shoulder may not play out because we do have an anchor wave, a trigger wave, and things could be moving lower, but the VWAP is kind of moving up while the money flow is going down a little bit, a little bit of indecision whenever it comes to what exactly is going on. So with that, that is a oh one more thing uh we do need to look at gold okay because gold tells everything if you want to know what's going to happen with bitcoin you need to be looking at gold and for some reason my gold chart's not look nothing freaking nothing's loading right now on uh on uh what is this called trading view uh, nothing there we go all right here we go so let's look at gold right now we're looking at gold and gold is taking a bit of a dip we did get a red dot we are getting a red dot as of right now which is technically friday because trading view does everything that literally the next day even though it's still thursday it's looking at um it's looking at friday and we are getting a uh, a bearish divergence so we i mean hey if we're looking at gold getting a bearish divergence and a red dot we do anticipate gold to move down maybe bitcoin as well and that means that the, the that the dollar moves up okay that could be the case but let's look at silver again okay silver <laughs> silver broke out of this long pattern that it's been in looks like it may want to retest so i do anticipate the dollar to be going up in value maybe we get a bit of a a little bit more of a pullback okay we may be getting a little bit more of a pullback silver is wanting to go down looks like it wants to retest 25 and then possibly explode to the moon not only that but on market side for b it does look like another red dot wants to print here and the uh the vwap is getting closer to the zero line so that's that 
And now let's move on to a little bit of housekeeping. This is Crypto After Dark. I am Jacob Perry with a Bitcoin for a B. And right now we do have 152 subscribers, 84, vi 84 videos, and I make all these thumbnails myself. So if you are watching on X, you know that I exclusively live stream on X, but go over to YouTube, okay? Please go over to YouTube, help a brother out at Crypto After Dark, and just hit the subscribe button. And if you are on YouTube, okay, just know that I exclusively live stream on X. This is a recording, as you know. Go over to X at X.com forward slash Presup Perry right here. Link in the bio right here and link in the description. Go ahead, hit the follow button. And this is where we are on X. We do have 1,612 followers. And on this, on this channel, on this show, on this account, we talk about money. We talk about politics. We talk about banks. We talk about crypto. We talk about economics. We talk about conspiracy theories. We talk about politicians. And we don't shy away from anything because as you know, crypto, not in its own little bubble. Neither is anything else. Whatever happens to crypto affects everything. And what happens to everything affects crypto. So let's be wise about our money. And, uh, oh, look, I, I said it was going to start. And, oh, yeah, I, I did post this earlier. <clears throat> this is over on the monthly time frame. Yeah, your dollar is being inflated into oblivion. If you own the dollar, why do you own the dollar? Go ahead. Okay, if you own the dollar, let me know why you own the dollar. Go, go over here to this post that I posted five hours ago. Let me know why you own the dollar. If you own the dollar and you just have the dollar, and you haven't bought Bitcoin, if you haven't bought silver, if you haven't bought gold, if you haven't bought any form of a commodity, let me know why you still own the dollar. Uh, but let's uh, let's move on here. This is kind of big news here. This is this is wild. OK, when I saw this, I was like, I think Binance is kind of uh, shooting themselves in the foot on this. Binance will cease support for Bitcoin based NFTs as it undergoes a process to streamline its product offerings. OK. I understand that you want to streamline your product offerings, but I'm telling you, if you're if, if you're holding out on ordinals and Bitcoin NFTs, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot. I think ordinals, Bitcoin NFTs are going to be one of the biggest movers in this bull run. So I think Binance is actually doing a really bad move here. Now, now I do understand why they're doing it from a from a like corporation standpoint. They don't want there to be any fishy business with the government. You know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be a company, you got to bow the knee to the government. You have to, that's what you got to be a bit of a bootlicker. Okay. So you have to do, you have to follow in line. And so if the government says, <clears throat> well, uh, Hey, uh, you know, those ordinals over there. I don't like that. Get rid of that. Okay. We just want Bitcoin. We want regular cryptocurrency because TradFi, they don't know anything about that. So uh, they they kind of got to bow the whim to the government just a little bit. Now, hey, those may not be the reasons, but I will say this. Those things probably do play a part, especially for the older generation who are in charge of government regulations. And they've made rules for the past like 60 years, the past six decades. And they put up these terrible, terrible barriers in play. And if Binance wants to play the, with the big boys over here in America, then this probably needs to take place, but I do think it's a bad move. I think it's a shot in the wrong direction. I think they missed the mark with this one. I don't think this is good by any stretch of the imagination. Moving on, this is from the Illuminati bot. I actually love this. This is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. All right, that's from Thomas Jefferson. That is 100% what I was talking about yesterday. The, like, you can't make this stuff up. This, this was posted. When was this posted? This was posted at 6.15 or 6 p.m. today. And uh, that was just a, like an hour and a half ago or something like that. But that's so true. Okay, there is nothing more dangerous. Why, why is, uh, okay, why are my hotkeys not working, OBS? There we go. Oh, and my hair looks bad. Oh, goodness. I got to fix that. Uh, uh, uh. All right. <clears throat> why, um, <clears throat> there we go. This, this, this is what I was talking about yesterday. Yesterday, I was talking about how every war is a banker's war. You could take it back centuries, okay? Literally centuries. And every war is a banker's war. You can go look at the Rothschilds. It's a banker's war. When you go and you look at Iraq and Afghan Afghanistan, you know what it is? It's a banker's war. It's a greedy politician war. It's about making money, having power, and literally not at all about liberties and freedoms and security. It's literally none of that. It's all about oppression it's all about regulation. It's all about laws. It's all about money and power and making sure you don't have any money or power, but they do. And so bank banks control it all. They play both sides of the fence. If you have one enemy over here and one enemy over here and they're fighting at each other, the banks say, hey, I will fund both of you 
I will come out on top and rule over you because now you're indebted to me. You owe me or you fail. That's how the banking system works. What does the Bible say? Whether you like the Bible or not, that's irrelevant. I think everyone can agree with this statement, which is what the Bible says. The one who borrows is a slave to the lender. And let me tell you, the banks know that all too well. If you don't believe me, go ahead, go borrow some money from a bank, then go buy a car with the money that you borrowed from a bank. Don't pay the bank back and see what happens to your car. Okay. You are a slave to the lender of the bank. So every war is all a banker's war. Not only that, um, oh goodness. All right. It looks like my hotkeys decided to not work. Um, but it says, I believe that banking, that the banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. And let me tell you something that is so true because the banks run America, the banks run Britain, the banks run everything. If you have a central bank in your country, your country is not in charge. You know, who's in charge, the bank, the bank is in charge of the country. If you don't understand how America works yet, let me, let me give you a little bit of a 101 crash course on how America works. All right, so you have Congress, and you've heard of the spending bill. You've heard of the deficit and raising the ceiling of the spending and blah, blah, blah. Let me, let me explain it literally in a very simple way how this works. The government wants to spend money. Congress says, I want to spend money. However, there's not enough citizens that I can tax to spend that money. I need to borrow some money. And this is how America goes into debt, by the way. So America says, hmm, I need a bank. So some people over here called the Federal Reserve Bank, which is neither federal, it's a private bank, nor does it have any reserves, but it is a bank. The government goes over to the Federal Reserve Bank and says, excuse me, Mr. Chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank, Jerome Powell, present moment, I would like to borrow $1 trillion every three months. And they say, all right. And here's a promissory note called a dollar bill, dollar bill, uh, just promise that you pay it back. And they say, okay, except... Uh, I can't really um, pay it back. And they say, okay, no worries. That's cool. Uh, but you will be charged interest on this borrowing anyways. And they say, well, I can't really pay back the interest either. So they say, don't worry. We'll let you borrow some money with that. So we're literally double in the money borrowing from the bank. And that is destroying our economy. This is called Keynesian economics, where you borrow money to stimulate the economy. It's all a giant balloon. It's all going to pop eventually. And right now it is popping our economy is not like our economy is deflating. Okay. Our money supply is not deflating, but our economy is deflating. And that's how we hit stagflation that we're in right now. And uh, now I'm going to have to do this manual. Actually, hang on real quick. I'm going to hit settings here and then I'm going to hit. Okay. And then will it work? Aha. Oh, there we go. All right. It worked. Thank heavens. Okay. I take it back. It did not work. It, no, it's not working. Okay. That's all right then. It's, it's working whenever I press the wrong buttons, whatever that means. All right. Sorry. I'm over here flashing on the screen. <laughs> um, don't clip that. Okay. Don't clip that. So anyways, uh, that's how the American system works and it really sucks. Moving on. This is our, our boy, Bill Noble, crypto bill. When you want to buy dips, uh, they don't go get them or people want to buy dips, but they don't go get them. So here we are. This is where we are right now. Look at this. So I remember calling these shots. I'm like, look, Hey, we had the three hills of death. I called this shot. That was great. Things went up. I'm like, hey, we're way overdue, but we just kept going up. And then I was like, yep, there's our dip. There's our 20% dip. We moved up. We did get a little bit of a three hills of death, one here, here, and here. And now we could come back down further to about right here. But hey, who knows? But like I said earlier, okay, if you are interested in buying um, the dip, okay, wow. It's now my hotkeys aren't working again, whatever. If you are interested in buying the dip, now's the time. Now is the time to load up. You need to be loading up on the dip. Okay. It's a perfect time to load up. So like Bill said, like I've said, when it happens, load up, don't be scared. Okay. We're in a bull run. Okay. If you don't trust that we're in a bull run, I can't help you believe that markets are all psychological. I can't, I can't help you believe that. But if you do believe that we are in a bull run buy the freaking dip, okay, you're not going to regret it. You will be making money if you buy the dip in a bull run. That's just how things work. So uh, with that, let's move on to the very next thing that we need to be looking at. And this is breaking. This is from Wall Street Silvers. Whatever you think about Wall Street Silvers, I don't care. Uh, if you if I like what you say, I will totally just re read what you have to say. Breaking. Ukraine will 
become member of NATO. Okay, this is a red line that will lead to war with Russia. Everyone knows this. Biden and Europe are intentionally trying to launch World War III with Russia. And let me tell you something, that is 100% the case. And I promise you this. And how do I know this? Because we need money. They want to print money. They want to spend money. They want power and money. And they want you to be crushed like a little cockroach that they think you are. But don't let them. Don't let them. Get out of the system. Take the orange pill, dude. Take the orange pill, pop a Bitcoin, call it a day. You know, take the orange pill, pop it. You know what I'm saying? Forget popping Molly's, you know, for, forget popping Zannies, forget all that. Pop the orange pill, the Bitcoin pill. Get out of the system. If you're out of their system and you don't use their money, okay, they have no control over you. They have no control over you. you. You can literally just do whatever you want, go wherever you want because you're out of their inflated, worthless fiat cash money you have a, a really good asset that will increase in price that will put money in your pocket real money not fake money not that monopoly money called the dollar bill but they will it'll literally put real hard money in your pocket and you can literally do whatever the freak you want okay now let me let me uh let me explain something i want to i want to show you guys this what do i mean by this okay I'm going to go back. Oh, where is this? Uh, there we go. Let me show you guys uh, the silver chart, okay? Way back here. I'm going to go to the monthly time frame. And this is exactly what I mean by putting real money in your freaking pocket. Let's look at silver, okay? Silver way back in the day. I wasn't even born in... Okay, let's, let's zoom back way back over here, okay? I was born in 1990. That's when I was born. Let, let's, let's go all the way to 1990, okay? Uh, June, there we go. We'll go right there, okay? We'll go to June 1990, um, and uh, January. We'll go with January, because I lost. I thought I had the uh, the percentage pulled up. But if you would have bought silver in 1990 at golly, what price was that? Five four four dollars and seventy cents, and you sold it in 2011, you 10 extra money. It went from 47. Or four dollars and seventy cents to forty nine dollars. Okay, now yes, that did take a long time, but that's hard money. If you would have put a hundred grand in silver back in the nineties, you know what? You just made out with a milli. You would have put ten grand, just ten grand in silver, you'd have a hundred thousand dollars. Think about that. Twenty grand in silver, two hundred thousand dollars. That's what you would have. But like as far as today's term, but that's real hard money. Now think about from nineteen ninety. To where we are now with the dollar. Let's look at this. Let's let's go. Let's look at the dollar with 1990. Um, we're gonna scroll all the way back from to, to from 1990. Can I even get 1990? Yeah, I can. With the dollar from 1990. Let's look at this. Jeez. Okay, I gotta I gotta really come over here somewhere with 1990. Um, yeah, it's approximately. Oh gosh, this is really bad. 1990, all the way to. Jeez, 2011. I need to go over a little bit more, but you see what's happening here, right? Like this is not good. And, uh, oh gosh, let me try this again. October to 2011, the dollar went down 12%. The dollar went down 12%. So if you just held cash from 1990 to 2011, you, your money, you, you got 12.17% poorer. That's what happened. So you're like, $100,000 is now only worth $90,000. Think about that. Think about it that way. It went, or actually less than that. Um, but if you would have bought silver, your money would have been increased by tenfold. Bitcoin's the exact same way. It does exactly what you just saw silver do. Oh, but that was over the span of 21 years. But Bitcoin does it faster and way faster. Crypto does it way faster than 21 years. So that's exactly what I mean whenever I say, um, oh gosh, where were we? I don't even know how we got to talking about this <laughs> to be honest. Oh, that's what I, we were talking about. World War three, but that's what happens. So, uh, every, everything that you need, everything that you want to do to get ahead of all the, all of this war mongering nonsense right here. This is so stupid. Uh, you need to be buying crypto. You need to be buying hard assets. You need to be buying gold, silver, guns, PPU, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, whatever you can get your hands on. 
to get you out of that fiat system to make sure that when the government does go into World War III, you're not involved. You say, I don't have any money. Sorry, I can't help you. you know, taxes. I don't have taxes. I have crypto. Are you kidding me? I can't pay taxes. I haven't even sold anything. And so it'll be a really good time. But with that, let's go ahead. Let's move on. Uh, I think, okay, we got, we got two more things right here. This is from FX Hedge. I do want to give a little bit of a kind of a warning, not a warning, but more of a, um, a caution. Uh, they are gearing up for a run of COVID playbook again. This time it's bird flu. They will have an mRNA experimental drug within a few weeks, mail-in ballots in every single swing state, um, uh, and millions of ballots floating around for everyone to fill out and send in. Now, here's the, here's the wild part. <laughs> Man, I'm totally going to get docs or not docs. Uh, I'm totally going to get dinged on YouTube for this, and I don't even care because I'm like exclusively live streaming on Uncle Elon's platform. In April 2020, okay, I said, yep, looks like the Democrats are going to try to rig the election. I said in April 2020. I would show you on my old Twitter account, but I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. So that's okay. But in April 2020, I said, oh my goodness, the Democrats are going to try to rig the election. And that became the narrative in August. It was clear as day. As soon as they said mail-in ballots, I was like, that's exactly what they're going to try to do. And it was the narrative in August. It went from August all the way to November. And it was easy to see as far back as April. As soon as Gavin Newsom said, we're sending mail-in ballots to every single home. I was like, wow, Operation Lockstep just took place. And now this, well, you know, put two and two together. Okay. Now with that, there is a, they did say that there's going to be gearing up for a COVID playbook again. This time it's with the bird flu. Now, I don't know if that's actually true. I have no idea. And like, I, I don't know if that's real. So take that with a grain of salt. This is FX Hedge. I do trust FX Hedge. I do read them. Uh, I read, I read some people from F FX Hedge. I really enjoy their stuff. Really, really good economic stuff. But take that with a grain of salt because that may not take, that may not play out. A lot of people think that Alex Jones, I love Alex Jones, love InfoWars, really good stuff over there. But a lot of people think Alex Jones is over there predicting the future. And they say, well, look, he predicted this and it never took place. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's wrong. There's something called things that can happen. And that's what can happen. So Alex Jones was saying, you know, this can happen, but if it doesn't, that's good. Okay. Th this can happen. And if we tell everybody about it, it probably won't happen. And so the same thing when it comes to the bird flu. Yes, this can happen. They could be planning this. But as soon as everyone finds out, they say, okay, we got to change the plans. They can't, we, we can't let them see this coming. So these things can happen, but will they happen? Very different. No one's predicting it to happen. We're saying this is the playbook. This is the plan. And if everyone finds out about it, the plan is canceled for them. But if no one finds out about it, this is exactly what's going to happen. It's exactly what's going to happen. That's why everyone forgot about Operation Lockstep. Operation Lockstep came out in 2011, and then it was finally took place in 2020. So everyone forgot about it. Everyone was blindsided. They went ahead with the plan. No one believed them. But when it happened, almost every single person went to InfoWars.com. Almost every single person. Everyone went Alex Jones. <laughs> everyone, including myself. I was like, oh, like this looks crazy. Let me see what Alex thinks. And that was the first time I ever listened to Alex Jones really and intentionally. And I was like, wow, pfft. Freak, I was all wrong. I thought he was a crazy crack job talking about frogs. No, way off, way off. Um, but anyways, uh, the last thing that we need to be looking at here is Dr. Peter St. Ange, PhD, tens of thousands of mainstream journalists laid off and what's being called an extinction uh, or an extinction event for corporate journalism. Of course, that's great news for regular Americans given mainstream journalists have become activists whose main purpose is gaslighting voters. Oh man, Dr. Peter St. Ange, PhD, just dropping the mic with absolute truth here. People just being laid off in journalism. This is why we need to stay on X. X is the number one place for accurate news, and inaccurate news because there's bots everywhere. But Uncle Elon's about to do a purge. That's really, oh, thank you, Uncle Elon. Uncle Elon, if you are listening to this, thank you so much for purging all the bots, okay? We're tired of all the, all, all the corn bots. We're sick of them. No one wants the corn bots. Get rid of them. Thank you very much. Everyone's having issues with it. Saw that you were going to address that with a massive purge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm glad to know that I'm not going to be in that because I live stream every single day, Monday through Friday on X. 
But this is why we need to protect X is because of things like this. With tens of thousands of mainstream journalists being laid off, being called an extinction event for corporate journalism. Journalism is dying and so is Fox, so is CNN, so is MSNBC, so is ABC. No one's watching. No one's watching USA Today. No one. You want to know why? Because times have changed. First of all, we, we've had many changes. We went from horse and buggy, okay, to uh, automobile. Then we went from dollar bills to credit cards, to de credit cards and debit cards and cash and all that to Bitcoin. Now we went from Fox, MSN, NBC to Twitter or formerly Twitter, now X, which is way better than freaking Twitter. I'm glad Twitter's gone. However, if you, if you look at the terms of service in, in X, you actually see it's still called Twitter because why would you change it? I mean, it's hard, the foundation's already laid. So if you wanna use it interchangeably, I would assume that you can legally and technically. But yeah, man, this is uh, this is not good news for uh, for the the mainstream media. The mainstream media, not good news for them. Well, who it is good news for is everyone who wants to be a journalist on X. Everyone who wants to work for not a big corporation like Infowarsstore.com or Infowarsstore, uh, Infowars.com, and go be a journalist there. Or if you just want to be an independent journalist, you know, go be one. Grab your phone, go down to the the border at Eagle Pass in Texas, be a journalist, and upload it. Not, not to YouTube, because they're going to ding you real quick, but upload it to X. And that is why we need to safeguard X with all possibility. Uncle Elon is very, very specific, very direct about protecting free speech and absolutely wrecked, wrecked, uh, what was it, Don Lemon on this. It's so good. It's so good. I loved it. Uh, but I think that's it. Yeah, that's it, guys. That's it for the stream. Perfect, perfect timing right here at 40 minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you are watching on X, go over to YouTube at Crypto After Dark. Hit the subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, go over to X, tap the follow button at Precept Perry. Link in the bio, link in the description. Go ahead and check it out. So thank you guys for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you at sunrise.